Right, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm John Hancock, and uh, I'm here on behalf of the, uh, the New Zealand Smart Grid Forum. See our very smart new sign down the front. So the Smart Grid Forum is an initiative of both the Electricity Networks Association here and the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. Uh, so the Networks Association, that's the collective of all the local lines businesses who carry electricity to offices, homes and factories around the country. Um, and the Ministry is responsible for energy market policy as well as economic development and a whole bunch of other things. It's one of the super ministries that's been made out of big mergers in the public sector recently. Um, but fortunately, Tony Sieber, our speaker tonight, can talk to both of these agendas and plenty more besides. I don't know if any of you were following stuff last week, but Tony was in Southland, um, and he was invited by Callaghan Innovation to challenge some of the uh, dairy and beef guys about um, disruption in their industries. And um, his talk of artificial meat, milk and artificial beef and growing burgers uh, didn't go down all that well with a bunch of incumbent farmers. Um, so we've invited him here tonight to share his assessment of how the same economics of Silicon Valley is going to challenge our industry, the energy industry. Uh, so a little bit of profile. Tony um, lectures in entrepreneurship and clean energy at Stanford University. Now, Stanford is the main university in Silicon Valley, and it's probably responsible for the clustering and amazing feedback loops they have. All these famous companies you've heard of, Tony will probably talk about some of them, Google, Apple, um, like, all exist very, very close to each other, and a lot of the alumni of these um, outfits went to Stanford uh, and, and maybe even studied with Tony. Um, but before that, he had a career where he uh, was involved in commercializing many, many new products and services, specifically with a review to disrupting the industries in which they provide services. Um, and today, uh, we're very lucky in New Zealand because Tony's still connected with us. He's a director of an uh, Auckland-based startup called CloudM. Uh, and what CloudM is looking to do is to digitize the health and safety reporting industries with a view to taking these over and entirely disrupting them from the manual and paper-based processes they have today. So, to share his views on the clean disruption of energy and transportation, please join me in welcoming Tony Sieber. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thanks, John, for that introduction, and thanks for uh, taking the time to be here. Um, sound check, we're good. So I wanna take you, today I wanna take you into the future um, of energy, a little bit of transportation, but before I take you into the future, I wanna take you into the past. Um, has anyone been to New York lately? New York, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. quite a few of you. Um, you went to Fifth Avenue, yes? You had to. Where else do you go shopping? This is New York City, Fifth Avenue, 1900 Easter Parade. Can anyone see the car? There is one car in this picture. All right, we don't have all day there. Okay, that's the one car in New York City, uh, at least the Easter Parade. This is 1913, same place, Fifth Avenue, New York. Where is the horse? Can anyone see the horse? This is a technology disruption. This is what it looks like. In 13 years, New York went from all horse to all car, okay? When a technology disruption happens, it can happen very, very quickly. Now, what is a disruption? It's essentially when a product or service, technology-based, um, transforms a market or disrupts it, destroys that market. That's a disruption. So that's what the car did to the horse. That's what the PC, the personal computer, did to the typewriter. And if you don't know what a typewriter is, then, yeah, point well made, right? Uh, and that's what the Apple iPod did to the Walkman. Um, let me fast forward to 1985. 1985, um, 
the largest telecom company in the world, AT&T, the then largest company in the world, hired a management consulting company called McKinsey, and they asked them one question. In 15 years, in the year 2000, what is going to be the market for cell phones? So give me a 15-year forecast. So McKinsey, a very expensive bunch of smart kids, went off, did their work, came back, and they told them, in the year 2000, the market, the US market for cell phone will be less than a million. <laughs> less than a million subscribers. And of course, AT&T did not get into that market. It was too small for them. The actual number was 109 million. They were off, not by 100% or 120%, they were off by 120 times. Okay, and this is some of the smartest kids from the smartest business schools in the world. Um, and by doing that, AT&T got disrupted. The landline business got disrupted, plus they missed out on one of the most important business opportunities, multi-trillion dollar business opportunities of the 21st century. Okay. So are we learning something here? Let's go to the year 2000. Kodak had a really good year in 2000. Revenues 14 billion, profits one and a half, 1.4 billion. They're sitting pretty, right? So 12 years later, Kodak filed for bankruptcy protection they got disrupted. These are examples of disruptions. And it's usually the insiders, it's usually the experts who will dismiss market disruptions. It's usually the experts who will tell you, nah, why would anybody want to own a computer, right? Why, I mean, the horse will never be disrupted by the car industry. Never going to happen, or at least not in my lifetime. So, you know, I think about this every day. Why do smart people in smart organizations fail to anticipate, let alone lead, market disruptions? That's my work. <laughs>